This is an advanced installation. It requires welding and fabrication skills. So if you're not comfortable welding, find a qualified welder or work with someone who is. Hey y'all, I'm David with Willamette Motor and Fabrication. Yeah, I'm Steven with Offroad Design. And this is the third episode in a series to talk about how to install your front coilover link suspension from Offroad Design. Remember last time we built links and got the axle all centered up in its positions and where you left last time, you got tires on and you're at full bump travel and you know exactly where your truck's gonna sit through its whole range of travel. It's a really big set of progress, but this time, we're putting coilovers on it, we're building an engine cage, and by the end of this, your truck should be sitting on its own weight. Now the first step in this process is to go and unbox your brand new King Shocks or Fox Shocks, whatever you've picked, and get those on your workbench. That's right, so we'll start, in general, when you are at full bump, you wanna have a little bit of shock shaft showing, typically a half an inch, maybe as much as an inch, but you need to have a little bit of insurance there. So in a king shock with the coil cup on there, cause it acts as a little bit of a spacer and takes up a little bit of shock shaft. The easiest thing to do is put something small in there for a spacer. It's gonna give you a little bit of room for that to travel past the full bump position in one wheel bump and have a little bit of safety so you're not bottoming out on the shocks. Now, before we take this shock and put it under the truck, do yourself a favor and put a lower coil and the slider on the body so that you can make sure that through this process that you're also taking into account the bulk of the full coil and shock where you place this and you don't accidentally create some sort of rubbing situation. That's right. The, the, the next step is we're gonna put the shock on the axle, bolt it into the mount. This is where you may have to, uh, if you still have inner fender wells, you may end up putting a slot in the inner fender well for the shock to come through. Um, you may have the, the inner fender wells out of the way completely, but one way or the other, the shock is going up into the engine compartment and you're starting to mock up where the top of the shock goes. We're gonna start building the hoop that is gonna mount the top of the shock. That's our next step. Yeah, most of what we're talking about here is actually packaging, right? You've already determined where the axle is gonna be. Now we've gotta control the axle and there's a lot of packaging steps to make sure that the parts that are gonna give spring rate and do all the shock and valving aren't touching anything else. It can get a little cozy in there, so be sure you invest the hours to make sure that this thing is all neatly packaged and we're gonna do a lot of cycling to make sure that stuff clears. So now you've got this shock and coil together now, wherever that lands, that's about where your mounts have to go. So think carefully about, you know, generally what the packaging looks like. Yeah, the shock is gonna stand roughly straight up and down. This isn't a super critical measurement. If you're within a few degrees of, of vertical, it's gonna be fine. It's really more about clearance at this point. So from a side view, stand it about straight up and down. We give you a starting width in the instructions to set the top of the shock, and that's that's where you build the hoop around. You can put your shock tabs actually in the eye. And typically we, we really like running the hoop on top of the shock so that the weight of the shock is pushing up on the hoop. Uh, you can also cantilever them out to the side a little bit depending on how reinforced you make your tabs. But this is where you start fabricating the hoops. Now about these hoops, you're sent two prefabricated hoops for to building your old shock and coil over engine cage. Do take some time here because there's several different ways to attach them to your frame, whether it's on top of a frame or to the side. Some people, you know, build outriggers. This is kind of where, as Offer Design says, you do some freestyle fabrication. The last detail before we start actually cycling the suspension is we want to make sure that your shock hoops are tacked in firmly and run a brace across the top just to make sure that as you're moving things around that the, the shock hoops don't break and come off on you. Brace it up a little bit. So at this point, you have shocks connected to hoops with a temporary brace across the top of them. And what we're gonna start doing is making sure that in all the different axle positions and combinations, which you have a list in your written instructions, all those different axle positions and combinations have good clearance, that the tires do not interfere with anything, that nothing binds. You're gonna be doing a lot of cycling. That is probably half of this entire 
episode because the more you can test now, the more problems you can avoid later. Yeah, when we say cycle, 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 and then cycle it some more, that's how this really needs to work. It's gonna be hard to do this too much because with the link system, you can literally put the axle in every position that it can achieve under the truck. There's no reason for anything to hit at high velocity when you're actually driving this thing because you can check all of that in the shop. And we actually have a checklist that you, you march through and you'll put the axle at full bump and everything's good. You put the axle at full droop, make sure everything is good. No joints bind, the drive shaft spins, the tires turn and the, the steering all works, that everything is good in that position. Articulate it, go through that checklist and watch all of those clearances. Slide the, the spring up and down the shock body when it's in all these positions and make sure that it's not gonna come across a corner of the frame that you didn't see. Uh, this, this is where you're going to do a lot of, a lot of work. It, it really is a lot of work. It's laborious because you're moving the axle. We'll talk a little bit about the tools for actually cycling the suspension, but hit all of these positions. That's why we give you a checklist and make sure it's good. Take this time to make sure that your panhard bar and your steering at all of these different parts, they're real close to each other during the cycling process. And you might think that they're going to hit and they may come close, but to Steven's point, they can come as close as they want. You have absolute control of the axle. As long as they don't make contact during this cycling process, you can be confident that the suspension is gonna work as designed. Once you've got all of that lined out and you're confident that you have cycled and cycled again and that there's nothing that's gonna clear, you've done all of your adjustments, then you can start taking apart the temporary cross brace that you have across your hoops and building a permanent one. In the kit, it is the long single piece of DOM. I needed to bend mine to clear an intake and really for that point, you need to make sure that your engine is entirely together, even if it's just mocked up, to make sure that you understand exactly how the bar is gonna travel from one hoop to the other and what it has to clear. Yeah, that's right. This is talking about the, uh, the new intake manifold with a crossbar in the way. <laughs> Wanna make allowances for that. And really the only thing that's even slightly tricky about the crossbar is the, the wristed connection to make it removable. Just make sure that those line up. Yeah. They have to stay in plane so that you can tap that crossbar out one direction and not have to do goofy things to, to get it to reinstall. Just a couple of details on how this package is together. It may look like your square or even, even most of the trucks that you're gonna have have a perfectly flat hood, but what you'll find is there's actually a pretty decent crown in there and you can route up and over quite a bit. Yeah, that's right. When I was working on the, the Alaska Bama Army truck with, uh, with Fred Williams, the 8.1 sits high enough that the crossbar actually, it took me a minute to figure out that I could run it over the fender line and still bring it down and it fit and didn't hit the hood. So just keep that in mind. It, it's possible for it to end up higher than you think and it still works. For example, on my 6.2 here, uh, it's actually almost a little spaghetti noodle to go from one into the other, clear the injector pump and an air conditioning uh, compressor and stay under the hood line. You, you have a surprising amount of work. You just may need to bend the tube in a couple of creative ways. Again, freestyle fabrication and a good welder. So all this fabrication and all this testing, where you're sitting with the truck right now is actually, it almost looks like it's together and it's pretty darn close. But before we're ready to finish that up, we gotta blow apart the truck and take it all pretty much back down so you can do a whole lot of welding. This is also a good time to think about some internal gusseting in the frame. If you've got your shock hoop landing on top of a C-channel frame, a good thing to do to, to help strengthen this up is run a, a vertical bulkhead inside the frame rail to tie that entire section together so that you're not just pulling on the, the weak flange of the frame. Look for little places like that where a, a small piece of steel strap goes a long way to make it all very strong and weld that in, you're, you're down to the end. Just these key elements of reinforcement are more than enough to get this coilover system done. I actually would nickname most of these because the idea was given to me from this guy. I'd nickname most of these Watson braces. The kit also comes with limit straps. To account for where the limit strap needs to be placed, find your axle at full droop, 
and then return up an inch and a half to two inches, and that is where your limit strap will attach to the axle and then find a place on the frame. In the kit, you're provided with all the hardware to do this. It's a little bit of a fabrication project. A pretty small fabrication project, but you really don't want to have the suspension come down and that the axle pull out and rebound against the snap ring in the shock. It's, it's hard on the snap rings. So at slow speeds when you're articulating, that's not too big of a problem, but you get into a little bit higher speed use, the limit straps are there to keep that from happening. One of the last steps in getting your shocks mounted is mounting the reservoirs. Typically you have the crossbar mounted because that's often a convenient place to put the shock reservoirs. Uh, the down tube off of the hoop is another place that's often convenient to put the reservoir. If you're running a, uh, a compression adjuster on the reservoir, you may wanna have it to where it's more accessible. So think about that. The biggest thing is you want a relatively gentle radius on the hose. As the shock cycles, the top of the shock doesn't move a lot, but you do need to understand that it can move a little bit and change the radius on that hose, so don't kink it. And one of the other big things is you can place the mounts, weld the, the reservoir mounts that we send, and then put the hose clamp around it. But place those mounts toward the ends of the reservoir, and that way they go over the pistons that are kind of the, the end caps on the reservoir, and you're not pinching the tube. If you have a hose clamp in the middle of that, it's possible for you to pinch that down hard enough that you can keep the dividing piston from moving smoothly in the reservoir and, and cause some extra wear there. So place them over the ends, tighten them up enough to hold it down, you don't have to kill them, and you're done. The last step in this is to mount bump cans or bump mounts to control and limit all of the up travel. So you're not just relying on the shock to be your up travel limiter. That's right, bottoming on the shock is uh, in light applications, it's okay, some sand cars, that kind of thing. In a truck, you really need to bottom out a bump stop. And this is where you can use a, a urethane bump stop, a rubber type bump stop. The, the really nice way to go is a, a hydraulic bump stop. And the biggest thing, you're gonna put the axle back at full bump. This has become a familiar position. And that's where the bump stop needs to be completely bottomed out. And this is where the nice thing about a hydraulic bump is you know what that point is. It's very solid, it ends abruptly, and it's done. With anything soft, a rubber bump, a urethane bump, it's kind of fuzzy. So you need to make sure that you've got some extra room in there for that bump stop to squish and squish around and maybe squish some more and change over time so that you're not bottoming out into some other important component. And this is where, once again, the more performance-oriented build, the minimum ride height, that's where that hydraulic bump really comes in because you could be up close to your oil pan. You could be close to running your pan hard bar into the engine at full compression. So that's a little bit more investment in a better bump stop might be better. Um, if you're building around a ride height and you're, you're really just protecting the shocks from bottoming out, you can be a little bit less, less involved with the bump stops, let's put it, and, and it'll still be okay. Okay, so after you've welded everything, which that does take a little bit of time, you're ready to actually do final assembly. So if you haven't primered and painted things and you wanna do all that, do it now and get it all back installed on your truck because we are coming to the last part of the project and the payoff is not far away. Take your coil over and load up all the coils in the spacer and put about a half inch of preload with the top adjuster nut and get ready to install that in the truck. Yes, yeah, so this is the point where you can bolt the coil over into the truck, you have your mounts, and set the weight of the truck on it. And this, this is a point to not be alarmed if you don't sit at exactly the ride height you're looking for. There's obviously adjustment for the adjuster nut and we can change the spring rates if necessary. We give you a pretty good starting point and you're probably fine, but we just want to get the weight of the truck sitting on the shocks at this point so we can start making some measurements and fine tune that. Okay, so with everything now back together, you are really ready to put tires on and have this thing sit on its own weight. So do that. Put the truck back down on the ground and take a look at your hard work. Next time, we're gonna talk about all the fine tuning to make sure that, as Steven said, the coilovers are all adjusted right and everything sits exactly where you want. But right now, just appreciate that you have installed a brand new link front suspension on a truck that was never designed to have one.
Hey, y'all. I'm David. I'm Steven. <laughs> <laughs>